friends, I follow a guy over on Instagram who goes by the handle Garage Monkey Sun. And he has some really interesting projects, but one that caught my eye pretty recently was he took a microwave transformer and made a spot welder out of it. But by following the excellent example given to me by Garage Monkey Sun, I'm going to go ahead and build my own. Now, a spot welder is not something that everybody needs. But there's an artist that I follow by the name of Arthur Ganson, and here's some of his work here. He makes these walking sculptures out of wire, and he has a really cool spot welder. I'll leave a card to his TED Talk so you can find out all about him and see the spot welder. Anyway, ever since I saw his TED Talk and this spot welder right here, I've wanted one. And I have searched everywhere. I've reached out to him by every means of contact I could find. No response. And our spot welder begins with a transformer. Now in case you don't know how a transformer works, you've got this primary winding and this is where you put your input voltage. In this case it's 120 volts. Then right next to it you put your secondary winding and this one is designed to take the 120 volt input and generate 2000 volts output. But that's way more than we need, so we'll just remove the secondary winding altogether and install our own secondary winding that is more suited to our spot welding application. So the magic that makes the transformer do its job is called electromagnetic induction. Now we all know that if you pass electricity through a coil, it creates an electromagnet. Most of us also know that if you pass a magnetic field through a coil, it creates electricity. So the steel core of the transformer takes the electromagnetic created by the primary and induces it into the secondary. And that's how you get your secondary output voltage. Now you can see I got right up next to the steel core on this side. But on this side, I didn't quite make it all the way through. So what we'll do is we'll just take a punch and knock those through. And I know from following Garage Monkey Sun's experience over on Instagram, this might not be all that easy. That didn't seem all that difficult to me, it only took about five minutes, but I suspect Garage Monkey Sun might have employed a different disassembly technique. Here we'll wind in a new secondary with some number four wire, then we'll test it and see what kind of voltage we get off it. All right, let's get on there. Let's see how much current we're drawing. Whew. Nine amps. That's a pretty healthy amount. Okay, let's get on this. Let's see what kind of voltage we got here. Well, now this says 4 volts. That's... I should probably test it before I put it in a box, but I have the box. So I don't have the electrodes. I think this old battery charger case should work just fine. Okay, so I put a fresh paint job on that little uh, box. Now we'll put our transformer into this cabinet. Okay, well I've repainted the battery charger case and installed the transformer in there. Now I need an interface from the secondary winding out to my actual welding leads. And the fact of the matter is I would have preferred to just use this nice flexible stuff for the whole winding, except uh, I didn't have any of that. Except where I shop, which is a metal scrapyard, you take what you can get. And this is what I could get. To interface from the secondary winding out to my flexible welding leads, I'll just put lugs on all these, and then we'll bolt them together on a piece of wood. Okay, for any of you that might be interested, this is my crimping tool. I am going to solder the connections, but I like them nice and... I like them to be crimped really nicely first. And if you take a good look there, you'll see that there's a point that is meant to align with the seam in the crimp connector. And then on the other end, when you beat these two together, it just makes a nice solid connection. Now this crimp connection is totally strong enough on its own, but I prefer the added benefit of solder. So I'm applying the heat to the outside of the connector, but I'm applying the solder to the wire. The solder is being drawn in to the joint, and that is called capillary attraction. This thing is almost ready to try out. Now I think all I really need to do on these is bolt them together and then put a bunch of insulating tape around it. 
I mean, this thing is coming together. All I gotta do now is build the, the welding handle. One thing I wanna do is I wanna cover up these holes. And I'll just, I'll just take this piece of aluminum, kind of stick it in there, put a spot of JB Weld on the back of it to hold it in place. This is yet another and a long list of examples that you'll never know what you're going to see on this channel. But if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notice every time I post something new. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now what we got to do is make our actual contact points. And what I'm going to use for that are contact tips from my MIG welder. Those should work just fine. And we'll mount them on this pair of plastic tongs and that should give us our nice contact point. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cut this down, make it a more manageable size. Then we'll thread some holes into the handles to accept some nylon nuts that will hold the electrodes in place. I need to insulate those tabs because I don't want to be touching that. What I wanted to accomplish with this project was to weld wire together in the way that Arthur Ganson does. Let's see if it will do that. And that worked. Anyway, that worked just fine. So there we have it, the Arthur Ganson style hand spot welder. Now I think I'm probably going to rebuild this handle because this has got just a little bit too much flex going on in there. But uh, if you want to see the result of that endeavor, find me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech. In any case, I am pretty happy with the result of this. Uh, it's, it's working exactly the way I had hoped. So that's all for this time. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.